Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the honor. And to God be the praise. King David said in Psalms 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David goes on to say, I sought the Lord and he delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord and the Lord delivered me from all my fears. So we're ever thanking God that he's delivering us from those things we have been afraid of and for those things we have been afraid to do. Thank you so much. Uh, for tuning in today. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Heavenly Father, bless this radio broadcast. Let your people know, God, that it's not about me, but it's all about you. You increase as I decrease. Empty me out, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Amen, amen. We'll be in Genesis today. Very familiar passage of scripture, uh, the life and the story of Joseph. Uh, Genesis 39, Genesis 39, verse number 12. Genesis 39. I hope somebody's blessed on today. I just truly believe that God has a word. Genesis 39, verse number 12. And this is what the word of God says. And she caught him by his garment, saying unto him, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that she had left that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth. She called unto the men of her house and spake unto them and saying, see, my husband has brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. And he has come in to try and rape me. And I cried out with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he was heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garments by her until her husband came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, the Hebrew servants which you have brought unto us came in and tried to lay with me. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that he was wrathed, and his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison and placed him in the king's prison where other prisoners were bound. And he was there in prison. And he was there in prison. From 1877 to 1950, E.J.I. researchers documented nearly 5,000 lynchings of African American people in the states of Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas, and as well as Virginia, many of whom were innocent of crime falsely accused of being disobedient to the Caucasian and falsely accused of the raping of a white woman. Right here in this text, we find Joseph himself in a dark and dangerous situation. He has already been neglected by his brothers, cast into a dark pit, sold into slavery, and now falsely accused of rape, which led to his prison sentence. And I want to tell you just like God told Joseph, you will get through this. You, you will get through this. For all those who are listening, I want you to decree and declare that I will get through this. I know it may be dark. You may be low on money. You may feel betrayed. You may feel belittled, ostracized, neglected, disrespected. But God told me to tell you that you will get through this. For all those on social media, all those on the radio, even friends I have on my page who are incarcerated, you will get through this. I know it hurts right now, but it gets greater later. Romans 8 verse 18 says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present age 
is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Paul said pain equals glory and glory is only fixing your story. Pain equals glory and glory is only fixing your story. You cannot talk about purpose if you don't want to talk about pain. You cannot talk about purpose if you don't want to talk about pain. I want to go on and say this right here. You are going through because of what you have on the inside of you. You are going through because what you have on the inside of you. First John 4, 4 says, For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's somebody right now that's been spending midnight tears crying. You've been, you've been spending a lot of times on your knees and you feel like you're broken. You, you have been asking God, are you really answering my prayers? You have been asking God, are you still here in my life? And God is telling you, you are going through because of what I put on the inside of you. If you did not have greatness on the inside of you, the devil wouldn't be messing with you. You have something so powerful on the inside of you. And if I can only get you to understand that greater is he that is in you, that he that is in the world So cry your last tear And you might as well cry your tear right now 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 says this But we have these treasures In earthen vessels God said I have equipped you with something so great I have equipped you with something so powerful and you've been asking yourself, why is the devil on my trail? The devil is on your trail because you are on Jesus trail. The devil is on your trail because you seek to do that which is right. The devil is on your trail because God has anointed you with something so powerful. The devil is on your trail because you're changing for the better. You're going to get through this. Oh, you're going to get through this. For all those sisters out there that's been going through, you're going to get through this. You've been asking God, are you going to pay this bill, Lord? It's getting close to the due date. Lord, you know I got to pay this mortgage, and I don't know if I'm going to get another stimulus check. Lord, you know I've been out of work right now, and God has told me to tell you, you will get through this. Watch this, my dearly beloved. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. I love you. Watch this. It was Jesus' treasure of love that led him to the cross. It was John the Baptist's treasure of truth that led him to death. It was Stephen's treasure of faith that led him to be stoned to death. It was jo Joseph treasure of a dream that led to his life misfortune. Everybody you see that's going through some type of storm throughout scripture, it wasn't just simply because of who they were. It was simply because of what God put on the inside of them. It was the gift. The Bible say for all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. It's your purpose that has you going through the rain. It's your purpose that has you going through the pain. And if it wasn't for God making you so great, the devil wouldn't worry about you. The people that the devil is not chasing should be the folks that's worried the most. Because apparently they're already doing what the enemy wants them to do. If you find yourself going through a storm, if you find yourself going through pain, if you find yourself dealing with a whole lot of rain, it's because the gift that God has put on the inside of you. And not only that, God also allows those storms to come to show us that it's certain people that got to get cut off. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's certain people. They did not know that they were doing Joseph a favor because they didn't even believe in the dream in the first place. It was Joseph's dream that led him to the pit. It was Joseph's dream that led him to be to slavery. And it was Joseph's dream that led him to be in prison. And it was for a purpose much bigger than himself. So sometimes God allows us to go through the storm to wash out the people that don't need to be in our lives anyway. And so, Lord, we want to thank you for the storm. Lord, we want to thank you for the pain. Lord, we want to thank you for the rain. Everybody, I want you to rejoice with me. We're going to rejoice in tribulation. We're going to rejoice in a thunderstorm. We're, it's lightning outside. Lord, we're going to rejoice. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I pray that somebody is touched right now. I pray that somebody is freed right now. Rejoice in the storm. Until God opens a door, I, I, I challenge you to worship him in the hallway. I challenge you. 
John 10, 10 says this, my dearly beloved. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Look, 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 look what the word of God says in, in Genesis 39, 21. And let's go back to 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there with the rest of the prisoners. Watch this now. But, look at verse number 21. But, but God, I was supposed to be hooked on drugs, but God. I was supposed to lose my mind in that relationship. But God, I was supposed to lose my sanity in that marriage. But God, I was supposed to go crazy. But God. Verse 21 says he was in prison, but the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prisoner. God is telling me to tell you this. It is not your job to try to argue who's wrong or who's right. God is saying you need to have wisdom on knowing when to speak and how to speak because everything is not meant to be said. Joseph could have tried to plead his case, but there's no need in trying to plead your case when you have a God that's behind the doors fighting for you. And the Bible say whenever God is fighting for you, the king and the wicked man can't get no sleep. The king can't sleep because he lied on you. The king can't sleep because he put you in prison for no reason. Whenever God is at work, the po folks that lied on you, they can't get no rest. They can't get no rest because God is at work. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. I want to close with a, sto a st story, a story that's very familiar with me. Gardner Taylor, one of the, one of the, one, one of the mighty men of God of the, of, of the, of the Baptist Association in the days when the government did not give a lot of African-Americans uh, finance to help them out. Garner Taylor tells this story before he died about, about his father dying and his mother taking all the finance that she had saved up to pay for his funeral and pay for his burial. And he recalls a story about his, his mother in the room crying and praying. She's praying and she's crying. And for those who don't know about crying and praying, you just live a little longer and you'll know all about it. And he recalls going into the room and, and when, when his mother discovered that her little son was behind her, she, she, she tried to dry her tears. And he remembers looking his mother in the eyes and saying, Mama, how are we going to make it? How are we going to make it? And she looked at him and she said, Baby, the Lord would make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow. He said it was almost 30 years until he understood what his mother was saying. He asked his mother how, and his mother told him who. It's not your job to worry about the how. All you need to worry about is the who. The who will always take care of the how. It's not your job to discover where the money going to come from. It's not your job to discover how you're going to find the healing. It's not your job how to worry about how the enemy is going to be handled. All you need to worry about is the who. The who will always take care of the how. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understandings. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. He'll handle your enemies. All you need to do is get a relationship with the who. And the who will always take care of the how. You will get through this. This is not your first storm. God has been counted as favorable. God has been counted as faithful. If you look back at every storm you done made it through. It was God's grace and mercy, just like Joseph, uh, that he had on Joseph, that got you through. You will, my brother, you will, my sister, get through this. You keep chasing God, and the devil must flee. You keep chasing God, and the devil, and the devil must, must flee. On, on Monday, on, on Monday uh, the 18th, is where we examine Martin Luther King's Day. And Sister Mary Stevenson, 
of Sheffield is going to be hosting a uh, parade and we'll be meeting at Gaston Chapel at 11. It's, it's best to get there before 11 and we're going to be driving through the city of Sheffield and also Tuscumbia and we're going to be making people aware of the dream, just like Joseph had a dream, making people aware of the dream because I'm afraid that our young generation has pulled away from the power of blackness and what God has brought us through. Joseph's story is a lot like the story of the African-American people. So we want to make sure we give true diligence and true uh, true insight on, on what we have come as African-American people. And we haven't made it to the promised land yet, but we need to continue to scribe. And the number one way of scribing is education. It's going to take both edu education and also legislation. Why don't you come to Sterling Boulevard where we're trying our best to love the unlovable, touch the hearts of the untouchable, and forgive the unforgivable. Church service start at 10 a.m. All you got to do is pull up, let your wonder down, and hear the mighty word of God. I pray that this message has blessed someone, and I want to close with this. You will. Not you may, but you will. You will. You will get through this. So keep your head up. Weeping man, do it for a night. But joy come, cometh in the morning. You will get through this. May God bless you.